Hello, my name is John Hegley and the British Library has asked me to look through some of my notebooks and old files and I found uh, a drawing here of a dromedary or a camel and you'll see it's got the one hump there. This is a goat which hasn't got any humps at all but it's got two horns there and its legs are a bit short but don't worry about that. You know, don't. Uh, this is a very small animal called an, an amoeba. Now, it looks as though it's a bit like a fried egg. It, that dot on the eye is actually about how big it is in actual fact, and it divides uh, to make new ones of itself. That's amoeba. This here is uh, a terrapin. Yeah. And this is an armadillo, which has the Latin name of Daisypus novemcinctus. And I'm going to make up a song about this. Well, I've made the song up already, but I'm going to sing it for you now on my cavaquinho. My mummy, she bought me an armadillo. I kissed him and I kept him under my pillow. And I cleaned him with a Brillo pad. Now, some of you may be wondering what a Brillo pad is. A Brillo pad is what you use to clean your armadillo. He was shiny and tiny and he came from Peru. His name was Armadeus, but we used to call him Toby. He had a suit of armour and he burrowed about the hills and the daffodils. He turned them inside out. And my mummy used to shout at him when he came home covered in graffiti. He was an insectivorous creature, the teacher used to say. And the dog next door, the carnivore, would sometimes come and play. We had racers and chasers down by the riverside. And sometimes we'd go swimming and sometimes we wouldn't. And he had ants and beetles for dinner every day. Them creepy crawlers, he could put them away. And he did his indoor doings in his indoor doings tray. But one day in the winter, when the willow tree was bare, I looked under my pillow, there was no armadillo there. So I ran downstairs and I said to my mummy, Mummy, where's he gone? She was having a game of rummy, and she looked up and she said, John, go and put some clothing on, you're nearly 24. I said, Mummy, it's an emergency, and I ran out in the roar. I ran down to the riverside, and in a rowing boat I saw Toby in the distance with the dog next door. So um, that's an armadillo song and sometimes I just write poems about the pieces and sometimes I do things called an acrostic where you take the word and you put it down the side of the page and you say some uh, a word for each letter. So owl, open, wide lids, because they've got big wide open lids. Um, o W L Ooh Woo Language. So you can make up some longer animal names. Uh, for instance you could try, couldn't you? You could try making up an acrostic for Dazipus Novemcinctus, the armadillo. Uh, that would be a bit of fun. And don't worry about making it to do with the animal. It could it could be daily Arthur says you and can go on from there. Anyway, the last song is about a parrot, and this is a song, really, I suppose there is a, a, an element of a, a vision in this of people being nice to each other. Not If somebody's a bit strange, don't worry about it too much, and let them develop, and they could help you. Peter the orange parrot had a very tiny beak. Unlike the other parrots, he was never heard to speak. But they were never nasty to him. Peter the non-talking parrot, they he just thought that he was a very, very fluffy carrot. Then one sunny jungle day, Santa Claus got lost, and Peter with the tiny beak suddenly was heard to speak. And he directed Santa Claus back to Lapland to be in the lap of all the other lovely laps while the other parrots had been talking. Peter had been reading maps. Thank you very much for listening. Get right in your own.